Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney on this channel. We answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the answer they need from an employment attorney. And we are going to answer a question in this video, but first and most importantly, um, I guess two days before you're seeing this video, possibly, I never know how the queue is going to work out, uh, but I believe two days before you're seeing this video, I did a video on having frank settlement discussions with your attorney, right? Like having those backroom conversations with your representation, the person helping you, the person fighting on your behalf about settlement and arriving at your, your demand, arriving at your counter demand figures, things of that nature, right? Having discussions about where you'd like the case to end up, all of those discussions. And, and that video, um, it was a great question. The person, person who asked it, the way they phrased it, just you know, putting it as in having a frank some discussion with your attorney, that was huge. I thought that was so clever. And I'm launching a new playlist based on that concept because I think a lot of the pain in this field happens when people and their attorney um, have fallings out or disagreements about the settlement figures, right? Because People come to this field and they see like, oh, this guy in Texas got $30 million and I think that I should get $30 million because my case was the worst thing that ever happened to a human being in the world. And then they like compare it to the genocide, you know, the Holocaust or something, which is bizarre. Like people, human beings are obsessed with comparing like what happened to them with either slavery, which go fuck yourself or, or unless it was actually slavery. Or uh, the Holocaust, which also, like, go fuck yourself. Like, what's, what's wrong? It wasn't, it wasn't, right? It was bad. It was done to you. It was bad. And we don't need to play the comparative pain game. But, like, don't say that your boss making fun of your protected class was slavery. It wasn't. It wasn't even close. And it wasn't the methodical killing of everyone of one race that was represented by the Holocaust either. Like, it just it just wasn't. Stop saying that, right? But I digress. Uh, this video is a brainstorming video. I need all your questions, all of your experiences, all of your stories. I need them posted in the comments down below. And I'm going to go through, and I think I'm going to just make a ton of videos over the next two weeks, trying to fill out this playlist, trying to address people's concerns about the settlement discussion with their own counsel. It's like that that give and take, figuring out what your attorney's after, figuring out if your attorney has your best interests or if your attorney's trying to flip cases, all of that. So I want to have your questions. I want to have your concerns. I want to address as many of them as I can. And I think this is going to be a huge, huge uh, boon to people in that position. I also think it's really good because it, it's helping a group of people who already have representation who can't hire us. And I think that's important, right? I mean, I, once you have representation, presumably it's on a contingency basis. So if you just fire your attorney for no good reason, they're going to have a lien. So it's very unlikely you're going to go hire a new attorney, right? Usually. Usually if your attorney does something horrible, that's a different story, right? Now, I, I just think it's important. Um, I like the idea of helping people who definitely won't be hiring us that, that's kind of nice for me um so if you can hit us up down below hit us up with your questions and and like tell us tell us like the moment when you decided your attorney was case flipping on you just trying to get a quick settlement tell us um why you thought your case was worth x amount of dollars and your attorney told you it wasn't and, and why and how the discussion went and how you felt and how your attorney could have done better um, ask us questions about the demand process and why your attorney might be trying to do something or why your attorney's phrasing something some way or why your attorney's refusing to have a given conversation with you or, or having a conversation with you over and over and over again, which always drives me insane, right? Like everything that you experienced that caused you wear and tear, aggravation in that process of communicating with your counsel about settlement figures that's what I want to know. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to answer for this playlist. Okay. Uh, okay. Real quick, let me find a question here. We had a ooh, I had a question queued up. Okay. Uh, we have a we have a question from 
T3H Zinro. So I read that as Leet speak for Te Te Zinro. Uh, honest and Te Zinro says, honestly, I hate calling my attorney because I worry that I am bugging him. He hasn't given me that impression, but I want to be as easy of a client as possible, and I really hate bothering people. Te Zinro, respect. I respect what you're saying there. I really, really do. Um, but I assume your attorney's probably on a contingency, which means your attorney stands to gain a lot of money, potentially, if she or he helps you. And so that means two things. One, it means they should really want to help you because in helping you, they make more money, right? So if they can have a conversation with you and you say something that helps them to reduce risk or add value to your case, that is a value for your attorney. Point number two, your attorney works for you. Your attorney works for you and you are paying them a lot of money. Now listen, I'm not saying call them five times a day. That would make you kind of a bad client, right? Like, But if you have questions, email them over. Or, or gather a couple questions together and make a call. Like, don't be shy. This person may make hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, in helping you depending on the valuation of your case. They should be thrilled to hear from you. Sincerely pumped, right? And listen, I have conversations with clients where I'm like, hey, hey, you know how you keep having, like, we, we run cases of teams of three attorneys here. And sometimes a client will be like, I'd like to ask you a question. And I'd be like, sure. And I'll answer the question. And then they'll schedule a call with the associate on the case and ask the same question. And they'll schedule a separate call with another partner on the case and ask the same question. Again. And I'll have to come and I'll be like, listen, hey, hey, uh, that's super inefficient. Like you're just actively trying to waste our time at that point. The play here is that you let us know you have a question and you can email all three of us and get three separate answers from us. Or you can schedule a call with all three of us and we can all hop on a call and answer the question for you with our different answers. That's fine too. But like we're not going to have three half hour conversations with you just because you feel like it. Right? Like it's got to be there, – there's some aspect of efficiency um, required. Right? Like that is necessary. It's a business. Right? Uh, but that being said, that is different than saying we don't want to answer your question. That That's stupid and wrong. The answer is we want to answer your question, but we do have to be efficient about it, right? Like that's – those are two very different things. I can't stress enough how different those are. Um, I hope this helps you with your feeling that you're bothering your attorney. Uh, you, you are not. And if you are, if your attorney is bothered by you and you're doing everything right, it sounds like you are – that attorney is, is being um, shitty, for lack of a better term. Anyways, like, subscribe, comment down below, share the channel so it may grow. Take care, everyone.